Ever pondered how the journey of computers, the machines that revolutionized our world, began? This tale takes us back to ancient civilizations, where the earliest known computer, the abacus, was born. A simple yet ingenious device, the abacus served as a cradle for computation, enabling people to perform basic arithmetic far more efficiently than ever before. This humble beginning set the stage for the evolution of computing. Fast forward to the 1800s, a time when the world was on the cusp of the Industrial Revolution. Here we meet a visionary by the name of Charles Babbage. Babbage was an English polymath who conceived an extraordinary machine, the analytical engine. Although it was never built during his lifetime, Babbage's analytical engine was a marvel of its time. It was designed to be programmable and capable of performing any mathematical operation, a mechanical general purpose computer. This was a radical shift from the single function machines of the day, marking a significant leap forward in the concept of computing. But Babbage didn't work alone. Enter Ada Lovelace, a mathematician who is often celebrated as the world's first programmer. Lovelace was fascinated by Babbage's engine and saw its potential beyond pure calculation. She wrote an algorithm intended for processing by the analytical engine, an act that earned her the title of the first computer programmer. The collaboration between Babbage and Lovelace was a milestone in the history of computing. Their ideas were far ahead of their time, planting the seeds for the concept of programmable machines. Even though their pioneering machine was never fully realized, the principles they introduced are embedded in the heart of every computer we use today. In essence, the story of computing is a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. It's a journey that started with a simple abacus and led to the creation of machines that could outperform human calculation. Indeed, the seeds for the digital age were sown in the minds of these pioneers. And the voyage to the digital age had just begun. As we moved from mechanical to electromechanical, how did computers evolve? This is a question that brings us to the fascinating era of the 1940s and the birth of the Harvard Mark I, a name that would forever change the landscape of computing. The Harvard Mark I, an impressive machine developed at Harvard University, was the first of its kind in the United States. Its creation marked the transition from mechanical to electromechanical computing. This was a computer that, while bulky by today's standards, was a marvel of its time. It was capable of performing complex calculations with incredible speed, something unthinkable with the mechanical computers of the past. But this machine was not just about hardware, it was also about the people who made it work, the programmers. Among them was a remarkable woman, Grace Hopper. As a mathematician and a naval officer, Hopper was one of the first programmers of the Harvard Mark I. Her work laid the foundation for programming languages and compiler design elements that are integral to the computers we use today. Let's not forget the vital role that World War II played in this evolution. The war created an urgent need for faster and more efficient computation, particularly for tasks such as code breaking and ballistics calculations. This urgency in turn fueled the development and refinement of computers. It was a time of innovation and invention out of necessity. Yet the war also brought about a shift in the way we thought about computing. It was no longer just about solving mathematical problems or crunching numbers. The war highlighted the need for computers to be versatile, capable of solving a variety of problems. And this paved the way for the general purpose computers that would follow. The war, in a way, acted as a catalyst, pushing us into the age of electronic computing. This was an era where computers would transition from large, room-filling machines to compact devices a journey that we'll explore in the next chapter of our story. Can you imagine the transition from large, room-filling machines to compact electronic devices? A shift of such magnitude occurred in the middle of the 20th century, marking the emergence of electronic computers. At the heart of this revolution was the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, or ENIAC, as it's commonly known. Built in the mid-40s, ENIAC was the first general-purpose electronic computer, it was a behemoth, occupying an entire room and weighing in at nearly 30 tons. But despite its size, ENIAC was a quantum leap from its electromechanical predecessors, capable of performing thousands of calculations per second, a feat unimagined until then. But the technology was destined to get smaller, faster and more efficient. 
The invention of transistors in the late 40s was a game changer. Transistors were smaller, faster, and required less power than the vacuum tubes used in ENIAC. They were also more reliable, marking a significant advancement in computer technology. By the late 50s, transistor-based computers were becoming the norm, paving the way for the next significant milestone, the integrated circuit. The integrated circuit, or IC, was the brainchild of two engineers working independently, Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce. This compact device combined multiple transistors into a single component, further reducing the size, cost and power requirements of computers. The IC was the precursor to the modern microprocessor, the brain of today's computers. This was a transformative period in the history of computing, a time when machines shrank from room-sized behemoths to devices that could fit on a desk. It was a time of rapid innovation and progress that laid the foundation for the technology we know and rely on today. The era of personal computing was just around the corner, waiting to reshape our world. And as we'll see, this next phase would bring computing power into the hands of the everyday person, forever changing how we work, play and communicate. How did computers make the leap from scientific laboratories to our homes and offices? This question takes us back to the late 70s and early 80s, a time that marked the birth of the personal computer revolution. In the late 70s, a seismic shift occurred in the computing landscape. Companies like IBM and Apple introduced the first personal computers, truly transforming the way we interact with technology. IBM, a titan of the computer industry, introduced the IBM PC in 1981, a machine designed for individual use at a time when computers were largely seen as corporate tools. Around the same time, Apple, a fledgling company, launched the Apple II, a device that would help usher in the era of the household computer. These early personal computers, while innovative, were not yet the sleek, user-friendly devices we know today. They were often sold as kits, requiring the user to assemble the hardware and even write their own software. But this was about to change. The development of software was a key factor in the personal computer revolution. As software became more sophisticated, so did the capabilities of personal computers. Software like the VisiCalc spreadsheet program turned the personal computer from a hobbyist's toy to a powerful tool for businesses and individuals alike. But perhaps the biggest game changer in the personal computer revolution was the advent of the internet. The internet transformed computers from standalone devices to interconnected tools, capable of communication and information sharing on a global scale. This connectivity made computers more than just machines. They became gateways to a world of information and communication. This period of rapid innovation and development was truly a revolution. It was a time when the computer, once a tool confined to laboratories and corporate offices, started to find its place in our homes, schools, and even our pockets. It was the time when computing became personal. Computers were no longer just tools for scientists, but had become a part of everyday life. The personal computer revolution had dawned and the world would never be the same. As we stand on the brink of quantum computing and artificial intelligence, what does the future hold for computers? The winds of change are blowing, and they're bringing quantum computing and artificial intelligence to the forefront of the technological landscape. These two groundbreaking fields promise to revolutionize the way we interact with technology, and the implications are vast. Quantum computing, for instance, harnesses the power of quantum mechanics to process information at speeds that dwarf those of traditional computers. This could mean unprecedented advances in areas like cryptography, material science, and drug discovery. But with these potential benefits come significant challenges. Quantum computers are currently in their infancy, and we're still grappling with how to reliably build and operate them. Not to mention, their immense processing power raises questions about privacy and security in the digital age. And then there's artificial intelligence, it's a term that's been bandied about for decades, but we're just now starting to see its true potential. Machine learning algorithms are getting better and better at understanding and interpreting the world around us. They're diagnosing diseases, driving cars, and even creating art. But AI is not without its own set of challenges. How do we ensure these systems are fair and unbiased? How do we keep them under control and prevent them from causing harm? These are not just technological questions, they're ethical ones. As we push the boundaries of what's possible with computers, we must also grapple with what's responsible. We need to navigate the balance between innovation and caution. 
between the promise of new technology and the potential for unintended consequences. The future of computing is a fascinating one, filled with promise and fraught with challenges. Quantum computing and artificial intelligence are set to redefine our relationship with technology and change the way we live, work and play. As we journey into this exciting future, we carry with us the legacy of centuries of innovation and discovery.